So I'm going to talk a little bit about different types of stem cells. I'm going to do kind of like a chronology from my perspective when it comes to spinal cord injury. Uh, you know, how we started and, and then the progression, and I'm going to use a couple of cases to illustrate that, and then you know, wind up with where we are today with spinal cord injury. Um, I'm going to touch chronologically again on the rationale, because early, early on we had different rationale than what we have today, but we only had what we had at the time. Talk a little bit about safety. I'm going to include some case reports. And then at the end, I'm going to have a, uh, a couple of videos of patients, uh, and then that will conclude my talk. So Dr. Paz was talking about the mesenchymal stem cell. They're found here, everywhere in your body. You have mesenchymal stem cells, everywhere in your body. Uh, some tissues are greater than others. For example, in the bone marrow, uh, as we age, the number plummets. Uh, from, from when you're born until you're, you're, you're fully grown, you've depleted about 80% of the mesenchymal stem cells in your bone marrow because you had to go from a seven pound baby to a svelte 160 pound muscle machine. No. <laughs> so, and, and also, you know, the, the more fat we have, the, the further we dilute those because they get sequestered in the fat. Um, so I'm only gonna talk about three stem cell sources. One, the mesenchymal stem cells that we get from the umbilical cord. So if you think about it, we roughly live 100 years, right? So this, your stem cells, your mesenchymal stem cells have to last for 100 years, right? And when a baby is born, the, you know, the umbilical cord is, is tied off and it's clipped and the baby's taken away. And then the mother delivers the placenta and the, which the le, with the rest of the umbilical cord attached to it. Well, that, the actual material, it's called Wharton's jelly, that is kind of a, like jelly, that, that fills the umbilical cord itself. It's very rich in these mesenchymal stem cells. And we take that, we take those donated cords from a healthy, uh, healthy consented birth, the mother, mother and father sign a consent form, the mother is tested for infectious disease, we take that cord into the lab, we mince it up, we use an enzyme, a couple of enzymes to digest it, and then at, we wind up with several million of these mesenchymal stem cells from the umbilical cord, and then we grow them in, in, in plates and in and, uh, and, and tissue culture flasks, and then we can multiply them many, many, many times. And we, we multiply them to a point where we know they still have a lot of potential left. But my point about using the umbilical cord versus the, some, uh, you can get mesenchymal stem cells from the bone marrow. You can do a bone marrow aspiration. And there are companies that are now trying to commercialize these mesenchymal stem cells that have been isolated from bone marrow from consenting adults. Well, the problem is the you know, you burn up 80% of them getting to adulthood, right? So the potential, 80% of them has been, uh, the potential of those cells have been burned up. They're programmed to only divide so many times, to only secrete proteins for so long. And so if you look at from, you're, you're basically, if you're going to live 100 years, the baby's only nine months at, you know, at full term, nine to 10 months at full term. And so you basically got that that full potential left of those cells. So, and we've, we've done trials using, not, you know, not, not huge rigorous trials, but we've treated patients using the adult donated ones versus the, the younger ones. And I can assure you, particularly with heart failure, the, adult, the, the ones that are taken from consenting adults from their bone marrow and expanded and given for heart failure doesn't work. Umbilical cord works almost every single time. So they're, they're, they're a different, they secrete different proteins, they secrete, they're more, more robustly, robustly secrete proteins. So there's a big difference between the umbilical cord mesenchymal cell and the, and the adult mesenchymal stem cell. So I'm gonna talk about those cells, the mesenchymal stem cells, and whenever I use that word, I apologize because it's a new word for most people, but whenever I use that word, I'm referring to cord because that's all we use in our, in our practice for spinal cord injury. I'm also going to talk about from the blood, okay, when the baby's, the, the umbilical cord's tied off and the baby's taken away, uh, then in the, in the cord and in the placenta, there are, there's blood. And so that blood can be drained out and it can, in that blood, there are another, another type of stem cell, they're called hematopoietic stem cells or CD34s. So I'm only going to talk about CD34s 
and mesenchymal stem cells, and they're both from cord. So we're able to isolate those from a healthy birth and expand them. And those are the cells that celebration right now, probably most of you have heard of storing your cord, cord blood. There, there are a number of companies in celebration, that's one of the things that they do right now. So we do not use embryonic stem cells, we do not use fetal stem cells. There's, these are either from the patient themselves or from healthy uh, consented births. That's the, the only sources of stem cells we use. So I wanted to start chronologically. In our first spinal cord injury patient was completely by accident. I mean, from our perspective, because he had not applied, he had not called. Um, he showed up with his doctor, and he was a 23-year-old delightful young man from Tennessee who had crashed his motorcycle three months before, and he was a complete paraplegic from T4 down, which I actually had some. Uh, issues with his arms as well, but he had no trunk muscles, he had no sensation, no function below his nipples. And we, we told him politely that we didn't treat spinal cord injury. And he said, well, I'm here. And his doctor said, well, he's here. I brought him down, you know. We should at least try. And we told him no, and he showed up the next day and said, please, can we do something? So we started looking at the literature, and we said no. He came back the next day, and we found a series of articles that scientifically supported the rationale of using the only two cells available to us at that time, which are the CD34 from cord and the mes mesenchymal cell from cord. So we had those two cell types, and that's all we did. And we only did intravenous treatments. So we looked in the literature, and we found um, there were articles this is the first article I ever saw that where they used umbilical cord cells in the treatment of spinal cord injury, and this was published in the literature in 2005. This guy was here, this guy was there in February of 2007, so this article had only been out for a year and a half when, when, uh, when he came. And this lady had a dramatic improvement. She also, there's a couple caveats about this. It wasn't just she got an injection of stem cells. They did a laminectomy, which is, you know, they basically decompressed, and then they put the cells right at the location. So there's a couple of caveats, but she didn't have any immune reaction. She didn't have any negative side effects, and she improved dramatically. So the, you know, the, the, Basically, 41 days after the transplantation, the testing showed that she had regeneration of the spinal cord at the injury site. So that tells us at least these cells are helping her spinal cord to repair itself. So that, that was the key thing there. Even though some of the improvements could have been secondary to the surgery that she had, at least the cells did that. So here, here and, and there, there are a plethora of articles, but these three were... They're all rat studies, but they all demonstrated that, that CD34 cells could be useful. And here's a summary of what was learned from those, those things, that the CD34, they improved functional recovery in, in the rats when they were treated. They reduced the area of the cystic cavity at the site of the injury. They increased the volume of the residual white matter. They promoted the regeneration or sparing of the axons in the injured spinal cord. The cells, in, in one study, they actually tra traced the cells, and this is important too, and they were there at three weeks and they were gone at five weeks. Well, a lot of people say, and, and a lot of people in the, in the embryonic world, their argument against adult stem cells is, hey, they don't stay around forever. And that's my argument for adult stem cells. It's great, they don't stay around forever. Once they go in, they, they, they're releasing the regenerative proteins, and then they start to mature, and once they mature, they pop up MHC proteins, which the immune system recognizes, clears them out. Guess what? No cancer, right? That's the problem with embryonic cells. They always cause cancer. And even if you're going to grow them up in large numbers and then differentiate them, if you have one left, it can cause cancer, right? One embryonic stem cell. That's why I'm so adamantly against using them. Um, so, so the great thing is these cells disappear after a period of time. They, these cells did not become neurons, right? But they, they helped to repair. And there was no evidence of immune reaction to the cells either. So those are the, those are the things. So there's another rationale for using the CD34 cell. They're, you know, they're thought of as hematopoietic stem, stem cells. So for example, if you're exposed to a lethal do dose of, a rad of radiation, you're, or you undergo massive chemotherapy for cancer or, or cancer, uh, chemotherapy and radiation for cancer, and it wipes out all your bone marrow, 
just one of these cells will repopulate your bone marrow, right? That's what they do. So they're originally thought that they're hematopoietic only, but we know that they have these other qualities. They home to damaged tissue and and they, they home to hypoxic tissue, areas where there's low oxygen, right? So they home there in, in a plethora of animal studies, they home there and when they're there, they release proteins that stimulate new blood vessels to grow. And there's just trial after trial demonstrating this. Well, in this kid's case, he had a, a severe crushing injury and so the blood vessels going to around the spinal cord that feed that area were also damaged. So our, our biggest point of rationale was, boy, if we can get more blood flow to that area, then he has a better chance of getting better, okay? And so that, that was the extent of our rationale, and we gave him, okay, so that's for CD34s. Now, for, um, for mesenchymal... <laughs>